Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will be discussing marginal cost of fund based lending rate system MCLR. To start this MCLR, first of all, we will be focusing on the role of a bank, the central bank with the commercial bank together role in management of liquidity in the economy. Then we will look inside the reforms which has been brought in the lending rate system in India since 1990s. We have witnessed various reforms in form of prime lending rate, benchmark prime lending rate, base rate system and finally what we are having today is the marginal cost of fund base lending. So we will discuss it one by one and then finally we will be discussing on the effects of marginal cost of fund based lending on the home loan borrower. So before starting a detailed discussion on MCLR, I would like to put some questions in front of you. And we have to be very clear on these questions when we end up our discussion. So first question is, discuss briefly the reforms in banks lending rate system since early 1990s. Why was there a need to move from base rate system to MCLR system? Discuss the effectiveness of MCLR system in improving the transmission effect of monetary policy. Is new MCLR system beneficial to borrowers and banks? What is the impact of MCLR on existing and a new home loan borrowers? Let us first find out the role of a bank in a country. Bank plays a very important role in the successful implementation of monetary policy. It is basically a channel through which monetary impulses are transmitted to the real economy. We have the networking of commercial bank across the country headed by the central bank. In India, we have a Reserve Bank of India which is the central bank of a country. So RBI together with the commercial banks play a very important role in successful implementation of monetary policy in a country. Along with that, it plays an important role in liquidity management, in the management of price control. So if we see the function, the role of a bank, banks plays a very important role in the country. Commercial banks are the major channel to bring the lender and the borrower of funds together. Lender are the person who have surplus of fund. They lend their fund to commercial banks and get interest on it while the borrower gets fund from the commercial bank and they pay interest to the bank for that fund. If there had been no banks, there would have been a direct relationship between the lender and the borrower like money lenders. And when the fund is directly channeled between the lender and the borrower, that is called the direct finance. But banks plays a very important role in successful implementation of indirect finance in the country. It is the intermediate channel which brings the lender and the borrower together. Lender parks their money to the bank and borrower borrow fund from the bank. And the difference in the interest rate what banks pay to the lender and what it gets from the borrower is the profit 
or earning of a bank. Along with that, commercial bank also gets fund from Reserve Bank of India, which is the banker's bank. It also lends surplus fund to RBI in the management of liquidity under monetary policy. In that way, the primary function of a bank is to lend money and to accept deposit from the public. And what is the difference between advances and deposit is the income earned by banks. So here, the lender lends money to bank and bank pays 8% interest rate to the lender. The borrower borrows money from the bank and it pays 12% interest rate to the bank. So difference between the interest rate is the earning of the bank. We know that India introduced its new economic policy in 1990s. That was a policy of liberalization, privatization and globalization. In early 90s, India also introduced its financial sector reforms. In the process of financial sector reforms, there was a need to progressively deregulate the interest rates so that it would improve the transparency and ensure appropriate pricing of loans. And that would give the benefit to the borrowers of the bank. Therefore, RBI aimed to strengthen the monetary transmission by focusing on the design of lending rates of banks in India. RBI initiated various measures to progressively deregulate the interest rates so that it would improve the transparency and ensure appropriate pricing of loan that would ultimately give benefit to the borrowers of the bank. To bring the reforms, RBI decided to progressively deregulate the rates, both the deposit rate and the lending rate. Here in this presentation, we will be focusing on the reforms brought by RBI in the lending rates of the commercial bank in detail. Now the important question here is, what were the needs which were responsible for the reforms in the bank lending rates? So RBI basically tried to strengthen the monetary transmission by focusing the, on the design of lending interest rates of the banking system. Along with that, it tried to enhance transparency in the lending rates and improve assessment of transmission of monetary policy. RBI basically targeting to remove the ineffectiveness of monetary policy in management of liquidity and try to find out the factors which impede the monetary transmission. So RBI basically aimed to progressively deregulate the interest rate and need to improve more transparency and ensure appropriate pricing of loan so that any change in the interest rate is effectively transmitted to the bank customer. If you have any question on this presentation, please put your question in the comment section and like and subscribe my channel to get further notification. Thank you so much.